Design KVTRO 500 mg per liter. The permissible limit of copper in effluent discharge is only 2 mg per liter. So it must be treated. Copper must be removed from wastewater. The copper removal methods are adsorption, bioabsorption, ultrafiltration, ion exchange chemical coagulation, and some electrochemical methods, electro-weaning, electrodialysis, electrodeionization, and electrocoagulation, about which I will present my work. Chemical coagulation has been treated for hundreds of years. It's a well-known method. Electrocoagulation is a new de development of coagulation, which is uh, uh, a new, okay, it has been treated in the last decades only. Brief description of electrocoagulation. Electrocoagulation is a process consisting of creating metallic hydroxide flux by electrodissolution of soluble anodes of aluminum or iron. The main reactions produce aluminum ions at the sacrificial aluminum anode and hydroxide 
anions as well as hydrogen gas at the cathode. We see the reactions here, anode, cathode, okay? These aluminum cations and OH anions can combine and give the coagulant aluminum hydroxide. This is a known coagulant. If it is present in water, all pollutants pollutants in water, flocculate, are destabilized, flocculate, and uh, fall and precipitate as insoluble precipitates and can be separated from water. And water is released from the pollutants. The only difference is that coagulation, this coagulation occurs in situ during the electrolysis. No coagulant is needed to be added as chemical. No chemical is added. Only the anode must be of aluminum or iron. It dissolves, gives the anions, cations of aluminum, which is coagulant. Additionally, a part of pollutants is removed by electroflotation, by the cathodically generated hydrogen gas bubbles. Because at the cathode, hydrogen gas is produced, this hydro, hydrogen gas uh, bubbles rise to the surface, okay, and some of the pollutant adhere to these bubbles and are swept together to the surface and are separated from water. And this phenomenon is electroflotation, it is combined with <coughs> electroflotation. Bivalent heavy metal ions, such as copper, are removed by absorption by the coagulant, or furthermore, they can combine with these an anions and give these insoluble metal hydroxides, which, precipi which precipitate as insoluble precipitates. Organic su substances expressed as COD present in copper electroplating effluents are also absorbed by the coagulant, aluminum hydroxide, therefore COD is also reduced. Both phenomena, coagulation and absorption, act syner synergistically, leading to a rapid simultaneous removal of copper and organic pollutants from treated wastewater. The experiments were conducted in Kabbalah Institute of Technology here in Kabbalah with this uh, geographical condition. Photovoltaic module used was echo line, monocrystalline silicon, 200 watt power. The actual waste water obtained from an electroplating unit with main characteristics, pH 4.1. Concentration of copper, 65 mg per litre. Concentration of COD, 286 mg per litre. Conductivity, 4,000 microsiemens per centimeter. After addition of sodium chloride, of uh, potassium chloride electrolyte. <laughs> the apparatus used were atomic adsorption, spectroscopy apparatus for measuring copper, COD, Apparatus, conductometer, pH meter, electrochemical cell, uh, electrodes. The electrodes were three aluminum plates in parallel, peristaltic pump, and a photovoltaic module. We can see a picture here the sun, the photovoltaic panel, the regulator to regulate the voltage, the reactor, electrocoagulation reactor with the three electrodes three aluminum plates, the waste, the waste water deposit, the treated water here, the clear water. Effect of pH. pH plays a very important role. If pH is low, lower than two, very low removal percentage of copper and COD. If pH lies between 4 and 10, 
high and almost constant removal percentage. If pH is greater than 10, then a slight decrease in removal efficiency is observed. The value of pH changes during the process due to hydrogen evolution and generation of hydroxy anions. In alkaline, in alkaline medium, pH greater than 8, the final pH does not change markedly because this generated OH minus anions combined with the, these cations of aluminum or heavy metals, other heavy metals, and give this insoluble hydroxide. So pH can be, remain constant over pH 8. The electropopulation process was conducted in the optimum pH range for 4 to 10, as we say. We see here in this table, pH, pH 2, we have a removal percentage of copper only 24%. pH 3, 80%. pH 4, 96 And here, this, until pH 10, the current density that determines the, co the coagulant dosage rate, rate, the bulk production rate and size, the coagulant flux growth, resulting in a faster removal of pollutants. Measurements carried out at different densities, 5 to 15 milliampere per square centimeter, constant initial concentration of COBA, 65, COD 286 milligram per liter, and pH, initial pH, 4.4 and a half. And then it rises. The removal rate of pollutants increases with increasing current density. In only a few minutes of electro processing, the concentration of copper is almost quantitatively eliminated, over 99%. At the same time, COD decreases by about 62%. At 5 milliampere per centimeter, current density here 10, now here 15, triple, okay. COD, uh, copper is uh, removed by 99% in 70 minutes, and COD by 62%. If, if, if we double the current density, we see that copper and COD are removed more quickly for 15 minutes, and if we triple the current density, both are removed in only 40 minutes. Effect of wastewater conductivity. The wastewater conductivity affects immediately the applied voltage, the current density, the electrical energy consumption, the, the removal percentage of copper and COD is hardly affected and remains constant over 99 and 62, respectively, for the three tested wastewater conductivities of 1,500, 3,000, and 4,500 microsiemens per centimeter. The wastewater conductivity was adjusted by addition of proper amounts of supporting electrolyte so, uh, potassium chloride. We see in this table that for conductivity, if we double conductivity, double and triple conductivity, we see that the voltage decreases, the energy consumption also decreases, but the removal percentage of copper and COD remain unchanged remain constant, 99% and 62%. We can increase conductivity by adding a sodium uh, a salt to get better conductivity, okay? And in this way, we gain an, in uh, energy consumption. We decrease the energy consumption. Effect of flow rate. 
The current density supplied by the PV array depends on the solar irradiation and the temperature of the photovoltaic modules. The photovoltaic electropopulation system become versatile to instantaneous solar irradiation by keeping the ratio current density to flow rate constant. It is when the current density density changes, if more sun, you will have more sun, solar irradiation, solar irradiation, more current density, more, more current is produced. So we can more waste water clear. So the ratio current density to flow rate, if it is kept constant, the system can be versatile to every solar irradiation. By increasing the current density, the cell voltage and flow rate increase proportionally, while the residence time decreases. The removal percentage of copper and COD is again not affected and remains high, 99% and 62%, as we have said before. We see this in this uh, table. If the current density is doubled and tripled, the flow rate must proportionally be doubled and tripled. The voltage decreases, the resident increases, the residence time decreases, and the removal percentage of copper and COD remain as we want it, 99% and 62 unchanged. Solar irradiation and current voltage curve of photovoltaic model. The solar irradiation density intensity depends on the occasional meteorological geographical conditions and influences the photovoltaic output current and therefore the performance of the electrocoagulation process. The flow rate of the treated wastewater can be used as the control parameter. For solar irradiation 1000 fat per square meter and temperature 25 Celsius, the most important characteristics of the current voltage curve of the photovoltaic module are the short circuit current, which is about 5.89 ampere. It is the maximum current at zero voltage, depending mainly on solar irradiation. The open circuit voltage, about 44 and something volt, it is the maximum voltage in absence of load, depending mainly on temperature. Uh, we see these characteristics, current voltage curve of this module, uh, for various solar irradiation, A, B, C, A, 1000 watt per square meter, B, 8, 600, 600, and such and such, current voltage. Conclusion. It is possible to effectively remove both COPA and COD from industrial effluents by directly connecting the electrocoagulation reactor to the photovoltaic generator without battery. The photovoltaic electrocoagulation system is made vers versatile to instantaneous solar irradiation by adjusting the flow rate of wastewater and keeping the constant the ratio current density to flow rate. The removal percentage of copper and COD remain high, 99, over 99% and 62 respectively, for various wastewater flow rates of half, one and one and a half liter per hour, and various wastewater conductivities of 1,500, 3,000, 4,500 microsiemens per centimeter. The proposed photovoltaic electrocoagulation process is a safe and efficient method for remediation of wastewater contaminated with copper and COD, and particularly in isolated places without connection to electric grid in a remote, isolated places where no electric grid exists. It is, and sun exists, of course. It can be work, it can work. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr.
the menses. Uh, please, do you have any questions? Yes, Professor Dupu. Yeah, but it, it takes, it takes, uh, still it takes time. 
And uh, uh, what? Uh, how do you think? What? Uh, what is to be done with this uh, solid phase? This solid you containing can, heavy metals you and organics. You can, uh, what to do break, with this? You can, you can break this solid, and you can uh, uh, take. Uh, you can uh, uh, if, if they are heavy metals, which uh, have something. Uh, mm -hmm. Some value, mm -hmm. like copper uh, or chrome, you, you, you can recover it by electrons, and by electro you, you have you can tasted solve, these you can methods as well? It, you can solve it in acid, solve in acid and do electrolysis and recover the, the metals for the cathode. Mm -hmm. In a very clear form. Thank you. This means that the treatment uh, process includes uh, several steps. Is the chemical process is, uh, is it applied to the industry? You said the yes. past, you said you said that by filtration. Now it is in laboratory stage. Mostly in laboratory stage, but uh, in uh, our own. Uh, it has become to be utilized also in industrial to be yes, difficult to uh, in industrial to be difficult to, to, to separate. By filtration you can do it in a laboratory, but only to go to the yes. process. There are some problems, yes. yes. But also chemical population is also filtration. The simple Population and, and uh, population also need fraction person. Only contribution. Uh, this lady is all right uh, because of uh, we have to see the engineering systematic is legal systems to separate the solid part after coagulation. Some part of the solid is settled. This is population, and some part of the solid is floated on the surface of the water and you have to bond uh, skimmer from the surface of the water or there the sludge and settle, I mean sediment sludge take in the sludge form of the deep of the reactor. Okay? I don't understand, uh, I understand the case. Yes, yes. Hmm? Okay. It's really a pr uh, great practical problem to separate the sludge of hydroxides from water. Any other question? Yes. Any other question? Yes, please. Uh, uh, concerning the CD induction, uh, have you taken into account the effect of electrooxidation in such a process? Uh, the atomic oxygen that is released uh, Theoretically, should be should oxidize some of the plant uh, uh, on those electrooxidation. Electrooxidation takes may take part, but in a very limited. It is extent because the the potential between anode and cathode is not very high, and the anode is solute, electro solute. No oxygen is released at the anode from hydroxide water, no oxygen, because aluminum is a metal which dissolves at lower potentials. If, if oxygen, if, if we want to release oxygen anodically, we must go up with potentials. So no oxygen or very limited oxygen is also, no, 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 so, sorry, I'm afraid we haven't time anymore and we have one uh, following uh, presentation and time is limited, so thank you very much.